Welcome once again to A Cup of Joe with Joe. Uh, today's topic is stucco and specifically stucco problems. Um, stucco goes back thousands of years, um, three to four thousand years. Um, that's a, a long time and we got, as humanity is concerned, we got pretty darn good at it. And then we managed to screw everything up in the last century and, you know, royally screw it up. Um, I'm not even sure whether we're allowed to use the word royally anymore, but that's a, it's an adjective that I feel comfortable using because the other ones I, I think are inappropriate for uh, a family building science coffee show. But in the last 10 years uh, and 20 years, we've made a real mess of it. So. So what, what happened? Well, back in the day, uh, stucco was used to keep rainwater out of a building. It was a water control strategy to reduce water entry through uh, brick and stone walls. So it was a, a, a water control shedding, rainwater control shedding element or device. When we started putting stucco on non masonry or stone surfaces, um, we would put it on, on woven branches. It was called wattle and, and, and daub. The, the wattle was uh, basically sticks that were woven together and the daub was uh, the cementitious lime-based gooey stuff. So it was basically an early method of um, lath reinforced stucco and was put on a uh, wood wood frame assembly, with plaster on the inside, and no insulation, and so it was kind of neat. Uh, water always water has always leaked through stucco, but only only a little bit of it. And it leaked into an uninsulated uh, cavity, uh, and it was able to dry in both directions because there was a great deal of energy available because there's no insulation, so you had heating going on the inside and a lot of energy lost from the inside to the outside. And during the summer and during the day, you had a lot of energy from the outside to the inside. That energy exchange dried the building out. When things get wet, if they dry, it's okay. Repeated wetting followed by repeated drying, eh, not, a, not an issue. Um, and then drying can only happen with an energy exchange. So, you know, we go back to about a hundred years ago and we stopped making stucco out of lime. We started ha adding stuff to it. We began to add Portland cement. So it was basically a Portland cement lime based coupling or um, uh, assembly, uh, composite. And the Portland cement gave it better strength. But we lost vapor transmission. And so the permeance of the Lime-based stuccos went from 30 perms to about, you know, 10 perms. Then we got completely rid of the lime um, about 30, 40 years ago. So we had 100% Portland cement-based stucco, and we are now into the one to three perm range. So we went from 30 to one to three, and then <laughs> we wanted to further improve it. Um, we added. Um, polymer modification. We added plastic stuff um, to give it tensile strength and the polymer modified Portland cement stuccos are now less than one perm. So in a couple of thousand years we went from 30 perms to one perm and more, more significantly in the last century we went from 30 perms to one perm and the last quarter century we went from less than 10 perm from 10 perms to less than one perm. Um, that had tremendous consequences. But it got worse, because of course it gets worse. All of our attempts to improve things always come as a cost. We significantly increased the thermal resistance of our walls. We went from no cavity insulation to R10, R11, R12, R13, to now to R20 or higher and that was great. It kept the energy in the building and it kept the energy outside of the building. And we saved energy. 
um, but that meant that there wasn't energy available for drying. So the energy efficiency improvements have led to a huge reduction in the drying potential. You can't get something for nothing. And you know, there's no such thing as a free thermodynamic lunch. So the energy efficiency came with a loss of durability. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we used to build out of thousand-year-old trees and rocks. Um, we used to go to places called forests and cut trees down and make them into boards and build boats out of them. And we could sail these boats all over the world. Now we make stuff out of engineered wood, which is an insult to wood and to engineers. OSB is the spam of wood. Spam is the OSB of luncheon meats. Try building a boat out of OSB and sailing it around the world. So when we went from board sheathing to plywood sheathing, from plywood sheathing to OSB sheathing, it was literally the, the end of the world from a stucco perspective. But it's worse. Of course it's worse. What other thing happened? We went from traditional building papers that when you put stucco on them, the stucco wouldn't stick to them. The stucco wouldn't bond to them. Uh, we replaced the traditional building papers with plastic building papers. And now the stucco completely bonds to the building paper, the building wrap. It's like being in a tent in a rainstorm with your nephew or niece and the little bugger puts his or her finger against the tent to initiate a leak. You get a complete loss of water re repellency and you get basically capillary continuity and the sucker leaks. So we really messed things up. We lowered the vapor transmission of stucco. We got rid of the energy exchange and reduced the drying potential. We went to an insanely uh, non-robust wood-based material and then we lost water repellency and drainage with the modern building papers. So what do we got to do? Are we going to get rid of energy efficiency? No. Are we going to get rid of engineered wood? No. Are we going to get rid of polymer modified stucco? No. But what we can do is put a gap between the water control layer and the stucco to provide drainage and control hydrostatic pressure and provide drying. Um, this is a big deal. The codes have finally come to terms with the disasters that we've been having in North America and are now mandating a 3 16 inch minimum gap between the stucco and the water control layer to basically control hydrostatic pressure and compensate for the energy exchange reduction and the change from traditional wood to engineered wood. So we want to drain the rain in that gap and we can then have durable, long-lasting stucco assemblies like we did hundreds of years ago. So stucco is going through a bad time right now, but you got that air gap and drainage and stucco is going to have a wonderful future. I'll talk to you again some other time.